Hi, I'm Eric Johnson here at Vanderbilt University, and I'm here with Paul Connolly. Paul is a Vice President and Chief Information Security Officer for HCA. And Paul's been uh, here at Vanderbilt as part of a workshop for CISOs, something we did as a sponsored project by the National Science Foundation, a project called uh, Trustworthy Health and Wellness. And uh, so we had a really riveting discussion with a number of CISOs as part of that workshop. And uh, Paul's agreed to uh, talk a little bit about that today. So welcome, Paul. Thank you. My pleasure. Well, HCA, you know, creates enormous amounts of data. I think I even heard you once say that data is kind of the natural byproduct of giving care. And so there's just a tremendous amount of data coming out of the system as it produces uh, good health care for people. And yet uh, that data itself offers opportunities. Uh, analytics and advanced analytics can be used to help improve health care. How's HCA thinking about that? Well, it's, uh, you're right. Not only do we generate a lot of data, but I think we in recent years have discovered through new analytical tools and, and data science basically the amazing value that it has. And we're doing some really amazing things. It's, it's so exciting. I, I hesitate to talk too much. As I said, I'm not really the spokesman for that part of our company, but things that, um, you know, tied to reducing the chance of uh, hospital acquired infections like sepsis and early detection of certain types of cancers. There's j the uh, data science team that we've uh, developed at, at our company are doing some amazing things and, and everybody's just so excited about it. And it's not just us, it's everywhere across the industry. You read about more and more how data is driving decisions that improve healthcare. And of course, all that data then creates something that is uh, right in your bailey, which, uh, which is security and worrying about protecting that data. What are some of the security concerns that you have? It's, um, it's an interesting challenge. I see these great things that we can do to take care of people. And I know how important it is that we've got to protect it because if we don't, it could ruin all these great ideas. If people don't believe in it, they don't have faith in, in the trust in the systems that the data is accurate and it's going to be protected. So on one hand, I need to make sure I'm not creating obstacles to how it's being used. But the other hand, I've got to work together with these data scientists and the new developments, whether it's analytics or other products that are using it to make sure that we're protecting that data because um, a massive breach or if something were to happen where you couldn't trust the data, it kind of all the great value goes right out the window. Yeah. What kind of threats do you worry about? I mean, are there specific kinds of threats, you know, whether they be email or spam or phishing or denial of service? Are they all, you know, important or are some more worrisome than others? It, it is kind of all of the above, but, yeah. but certainly um, there's, there's others, certain ones that we have to focus on the most. And when we had the forum here at Vanderbilt, what I, I think I talked about how we're kind of in a perfect storm in healthcare where we've got tremendous amounts of data. It's being exposed everywhere, whether it's mobility or through the cloud or um, you know people remotely accessing it or just so lots of data it's going lots of places and the threats have never been higher and the, the bad guys see the value of the data they yeah. feel that there's money to be made or maybe political statements to be made so as a result they're going after us and it's so put it all together it's just the stakes have never been higher mm -hmm. and um, it, it is a lot of different things. You mentioned phishing. That seems to be the number one way that the bad guys focus on sort of getting a toehold in the door. And if they can get a foot in the door through a phishing email, then once they're inside, it's, they're looking for other yep. types of vulnerabilities that they can exploit. So you, you have to focus on everything in the chain. But we're, we're trying to really focus on educating members of our staff that you've got to be aware of phishing because if we can block that first step, that really helps us down the, down the line. Yeah. Well, one of the things that you raised to, to the group were threats to the patient care delivery system itself, uh, not so much uh, threat to the data like identity theft or something like that, but really threats to the system, the delivery system. What are some of the things that you're thinking about there? Well, I. I have to say, I try not to sound like the prophet of doom, but um, it, it is a worry. And, and we work with the Department of Homeland Security, we work with the FBI, the Secret Service, and, and security companies to try to get intelligence from them so that we're looking ahead. And 
pretty consistent message that we get is that, you know, 10 years ago we were worried about <clears throat> people writing viruses and worms, and then it became people trying to steal personal data for identity theft, and 2016 kind of became the year of ransomware, and the concern is that the next step is going to, going to be attacks that try to shut down operations. So we're trying to take the right steps to harden our infrastructure, make our staff uh, more savvy users, do all these pieces that help us sort of raise the bar so that if that, that threat becomes the reality, we're in a better position to defend against it. Yes. So Paul, you're in a big organization, HCA, and of course manage a, a large security organization. And so one of the things I always like to ask uh, visitors here at the Owen School is uh, to share a leadership lesson, something you've learned along the way. You know, I would say probably the biggest thing I've learned is the importance of integrating with everybody. And I don't want to sound real cheesy, you know, it takes a village kind of thing, <laughs> but in, in my role especially, I have never once been turned down when I went to our company leadership and asked for more people or dollars for new technology and so forth. But you can't, like in the security world, <clears throat> you can't just in invest in the new tool or the new technology. It's got to be something that everybody can embrace and that it fits into how the business operates. Mm -hmm. So for example, everything we do, it has to work with our doctors, with our nurses. It has to work from a business perspective. So I just can't operate in a, in a vacuum. I've got to constantly be out working with all the other parts of the organization and talking about what we want to try to accomplish, helping people understand how important that is so that they're advocates and they're, they're helping me figure out how to make it work in their side of the business. Yeah. So, so really leading through influence. And yes, absolutely. Um, I, I would say, I, I know I'm being specific to information security, but you can't be the tyrant who makes these black and white edicts and says this is the way we're going to do things. You've got to work with the other parts of the organization and figure out jointly how are we going to solve this problem. That's great. Well, Paul, thanks so much for joining us today. Happy to do it. Thank you.